According to the US government, over 90% of cyber attacks begin with phishing. And in the 10 or so years that I've been working in cybersecurity, that's been my experience too. So it's very common now that companies run their own phishing tests. In this video, I'm gonna be running through the good, the bad, and the ugly of phishing simulations. I'll be talking about when phishing simulations can be useful, what some of the drawbacks are, how you can run phishing simulations in an effective and a positive way, and I'll be sharing my thoughts on a very hot topic, whether we should be using the same tactics in phishing simulations that cyber criminals use in their real phishing attacks. I've been working on the human side of cybersecurity for over 10 years. I work with multinational banks and organizations to help them effectively raise awareness, positively influence behaviors, and build constructive, proactive cybersecurity cultures. So that is the perspective that I am bringing to this conversation. First up, let's make sure we are all on the same page with a look at what we actually mean by phishing simulations. What are they? The aim of phishing simulations is to help people identify, avoid, and report phishing emails, real phishing emails, when they come in. So security teams will send fake, harmless phishing tests from within the company to help people spot the signs and know how to report real phishing emails when they turn up. The aim here is to raise awareness of phishing and to gauge how people respond to phishing at an organizational level. What are some of the positives about phishing simulations? Well, first up, they can help raise awareness. They can help people identify some of the red flags with phishing, and they can generate those all important conversations about phishing and about cybersecurity in general. Phishing simulations can provide useful metrics. And no, I'm not talking about click rate. People will always click and trying to drive down the click rate to say 0%, I just think that's a bit of a red herring. Instead, I would say a good thing about phishing simulations is when you use them as a way of looking at the metrics around reporting. Do people report phishing messages and emails? How quickly do they report them? Do they report them via the mechanism that you want, you know, the official way? If not, then that gives you a lot of opportunity to understand the kind of awareness raising you could and should be doing. Phishing simulations can also give you some good metrics around the kind of bait that people are most susceptible to when it comes to phishing in general. So again, this can be a great resource for giving you information over the kind of awareness raising that you could be doing to most help support your colleagues. And for some companies, of course, running phishing simulations may be part of their compliance requirements. In which case, if you have to run phishing simulations, then do them the right way, do them in the most effective way. And I'll be running through how I see that. So we've covered some of the positives of phishing simulations. What about the drawbacks? Well, oh my, Ethics and empathy are very important when it comes to running phishing simulations. There have been many cases of people becoming upset with their employer, even sharing about it on social media, when a phishing simulation goes too far and breaches their trust. I've written a pretty popular blog article about this. The link is in the description and I'm gonna share some of my thoughts on it now. When phishing simulations use pay rises or bonuses as bait, people can, of course, become pretty upset about that. And it is especially problematic in the current economic circumstances. During COVID-19 lockdowns, there were even cases of some companies using the pandemic as a theme of their internal phishing tests. For example, around the vaccine, at a time when we were all or lots of us were anxiously waiting for the vaccine, there were some companies using click here to book your vaccine as bait in their phishing simulations. Some cybersecurity professionals argue that as cybercriminals use these tactics, we can and should as well. 
Mm -mm, I do not agree. Cyber criminals don't have to be concerned with building long-term trust and self-efficacy among their targets, nor do they have to worry about the cultural and ethical ramifications of what they are doing. But as cybersecurity professionals, this is absolutely central to our work. When phishing simulations breach the trust of your colleagues, then they are not training, they are tricks. The intention of such tests undoubtedly mostly comes from the right place, but the execution is flawed. There is no consideration of the psychological safety of your colleagues and of the long-term implications of your relationship with them. You need to be thinking with empathy and you need to be considering your targets and their psychological safety. You need to be thinking about their circumstances. So phishing simulations that use very emotive bait can have a negative impact on three different levels. Number one, individual employees, your colleagues can feel upset and betrayed by very emotive bait in phishing simulations. This can be unpleasant, it's not nice, and of course, in extreme examples, this kind of feeling can lead to the rise of a malicious insider. Number two, the security team will face greater barriers in building the cybersecurity awareness, behavior, and culture of the organization because the trust, the relationship has been damaged. Number three, the organization's security posture overall is undermined and productivity could even be harmed. And I've seen this happen as people start to question every email that comes into them and feel that they cannot interact with any email that they receive. Ultimately, if people don't feel they can trust their own security team, then why would they go with to them with concerns, with questions, or with a potential incident? I've written about the psychological consequences of being a victim of phishing, and this applies to phishing simulations too. The link's in the description if you want to read more. Essentially, leading with empathy is crucial if you want to positively influence your colleagues and the security culture of the organization as a whole. So how can you run phishing simulations in a way that is effective and positive? I've got three top tips for you. Number one, lead with empathy and compassion. As I've said, this exercise should not be about trying to catch people out, it should be trying to help them. So consider your colleagues, consider the possible unintended consequences of your phishing test and whether you are acting with empathy and ethics. I believe certain topics should be completely avoided in phishing simulations. For example, pay rises or pay cuts, healthcare and company restructuring. Tip number two, focus on the positive, not the negative. Now, this is one of my golden rules for security in general, but what do I mean by it here? Well, first up, I mean focus on the behavior that you want coming out of the phishing simulations. So focus on report rate, not click rate. Chasing a 0% click rate is pretty meaningless. Really trying to raise your report rate, now that is where it's at and reward people for reporting, don't punish people for clicking. So really shine a light on the behavior that you want and the people practicing that behavior to encourage more of it. Tip number three, remember that phishing simulations they're just a tool, they're just one tool, and like any tool, the impact will depend on how you wield it. 
They are not the answer to effectively managing human risk in an organization. Just like simply running annual awareness raising is not the answer either. If you want to effectively raise cybersecurity awareness, if you want to positively influence behavior, and if you want to build a proactive, positive cybersecurity culture, then it takes more than that. It takes an approach which truly puts people at the heart of cybersecurity. Security. And that approach sees phishing simulations as one tool for training, not as a trick.